design is created by skilled artists and engravers, either in-house at the Mint or contracted from external design agencies. The design is typically created using computer-aided design, CAD, software. Since these designs are drawn on large digital canvases, they allow the artist or sculptor to make precise detailing and adjustments. The approved design is transferred onto a larger metal piece called a master die through a process known as hubbing. The master hub is made from hardened steel and contains the raised mirror image of the coin's design. Since the relief or image on the master hub is positive, if it's used to strike a coin, the coin's image will be negative or reversed. To avoid this, several working dies are created from the master hub. Each die can produce thousands of coins before wearing out, so multiple dies are created to accommodate large production runs. Each country has its own set of guidelines for the composition of its currency. The vendors who supply the metal or stock to the mints must follow these guidelines to the letter. While gold, silver, or bronze were the coinage metals of the ancient world, these days most coins are made up of nickel, copper, or aluminum. On top of being cost productive, these metals are also resistant to corrosion, which allows them to maintain their shape over extended periods of circulation. Additionally, copper's electrical conductivity is useful for coins used in electronic transactions. In the factory, strips of copper, nickel, or zinc are ready to be turned into coins. Each strip is about 1,500 feet long, which equals the length of five football fields. Coin blanks, also known as planchets, are produced from metal strips of the appropriate composition, such as copper, nickel, zinc, etc. The metal strips are fed into a blanking press, which punches out round discs with the precise dimensions of the intended coin. The blanks may undergo annealing, a process of heating and cooling to make them more malleable and reduce the risk of cracks during striking. The perfect blanks are carried by conveyor belt to the coining press, where they are stamped with designs and inscriptions. A steel collar is inserted into the press around one of the dies. The die for the reverse side is loaded into the upper arm of the press. Hundreds of tons of air pressure push the blank into the collar. At the same time, the overhead die is forced down into the collar and onto the blank. The impact causes the impressions to form on both sides of the blank. The press releases the newly minted coin and it moves along a conveyor belt to the inspection line. In some instances, the collar has grooves to make the rigid edges on the coin. Otherwise, the grooves are made after the striking process on a tool called an upsetting mill. The size of the press varies from single capacity to ones that stamp four coins simultaneously. Single striking presses generally stamp 400 coins per minute with pressure loads up to 180 tons. Multiple presses can crank out 120 coins per minute under 250 tons of pressure. After striking, the coins are visually inspected and undergo quality control checks. Automated inspection machines can detect and remove defective coins. The freshly minted coins may go through additional processes for finishing touches, such as burnishing, electroplating, or applying protective coatings to enhance their appearance and durability. The minted and finished coins are counted and sorted into batches. They are then packed in rolls, bags, or other containers suitable for distribution. The coins are distributed to banks, financial institutions, retailers, and collectors. In some cases, the coins may be shipped internationally to meet demand in other countries. As digital payment solutions and electronic transactions continue to gain popularity and advancements in financial technology, FinTech reshape how people conduct transactions, it's not long before coins become a relic of the past.